So let's take a little closer look at the mucosal lining of our stomach. You'll remember that the stomach is divided into several regions. One of the regions we'll discuss here is the fundus. In the mucosal layer, we know that there are gastric pits as well as gastric glands. We're going to take a closer look at the components of the gastric pit and gastric glands. In the gastric pit, there are five different cell types. Of these five cell types, four of them are involved in secreting at least three liters of gastric juice each day. And one, the G cells, are hormone secreting cells. The four cell types involved in secretion of gastric juice are these surface mucosal cells. And then we have mucus neck cells that we see as the gastric pit transitions down into the gastric gland. The mucosal neck cells are involved in secretion of acidic fluid that contains mucin. So both the surface mucosal cells and the mucus neck cells secrete mucin, which produces a layer of about one to three millimeters thick. And this secretion acts to protect the gastric lining. The surface mucosal cells secrete more of an alkaline fluid, and then the mucosal neck cells secrete much more of an acidic fluid. This acidic secretion of the mucosal neck cells is designed to maintain the acidic conditions that are created by the parietal cells. You'll notice that there are a number of different parietal cells interspersed amongst the mucosal neck cells. Now, these parietal cells secrete a number of different things. First, and most importantly, they secrete hydrochloric acid. Now, of course, we can't form the hydrochloric acid actually inside the cell, so we'll take a little closer look at how that's formed here soon. But they also secrete an intrinsic factor, which is key in the absorption of vitamin B12 in the ileum, the lower part of the small intestine. In addition, we're going to see that there are chief cells. These are called chief cells because there are more chief cells than any other cells in the gastric pit. The chief cells are responsible for secretion of pepsinogen as well as gastric lipase. The pepsinogen is a precursor to pepsin. Now, pepsinogen needs to be formed and secreted inactive as its inactive form because if it's secreted as its active form, then it's going to digest the chief cell proteins themselves. So it secretes pepsinogen and then the acidic environment of the gastric pit allows it to become an active form pepsin. Finally, we have the hormone secreting cells or the G cells. These G cells are enteroendocrine cells. That means they're endocrine cells of the gut and these secrete gastrin into the blood. Let's take a closer look. So here we can see our, our four different cell types. We've got the surface mucosal cells as well as these mucus neck cells. We get more mucus neck cells as we move down into the pit. Then there are chief cells as well as parietal cells. The parietal cells are going to be secreting the hydrochloric acid as well as intrinsic factor. Now, they have to secrete the hydrogen and the chloride separately. Otherwise, hydrochloric acid inside the parietal cell would simply destroy the contents of the parietal cell. Then we have the chief cells. These chief cells primarily are going to secrete pepsinogen. Now, pepsinogen is really important because it will be activated by this hydrochloric acid to become the active form of pepsin. Pepsin is the thing that denatures and digests proteins. Now, the parietal cells also will secrete ghrelin. And as you probably know, ghrelin is involved in appetite. So as the stomach becomes more empty, the parietal cells will secrete ghrelin, particularly in that fundus region. So when the stomach is empty, this fundus region of the stomach is going to be above anything that's in the lower portion of the stomach. So as there's less food in the stomach, the parietal cells in this fundus region will begin to secrete ghrelin, which stimulates appetite. And finally, we have these little mentioned G cells. G cells are involved in the secretion of gastrin 
into the blood. Once the gastrin moves into the blood, it's going to stimulate motility of the stomach. So in the blood, this hormone is floating around and it's stimulating the stomach to contract and essentially grind up food, as well as stimulating other stomach secretions like pepsinogen and hydrochloric acid from the parietal and chief cells. So hopefully this clears up your understanding of the gastric pits and gastric glands and all of the gastric secretions.